Yo peoples, what's up? It's Cake or Sprinkles here in brown and white. Hey guys, and welcome back to Storyline Sunday. And <clears throat> so yeah, I've been posting every what, couple of days now. I, you know, I've been busy at the theater, okay? But I assure you, everything has been going awesome. And I now have nine documents. So, guys, if you don't remember the last episode or haven't seen the last episode, then I will leave a link in the description below to for the playlist. Please go back and watch the episodes in order. But today is going to be something unique. Not really unique, it's another chapter. Same difference to me. But today, we are going to see conflict for the first time. So, who's excited? Anyways, guys, let's get on with this. <clears throat> Chapter 9, Internal Conflict. Toothless Ice Cream and Red immediately regretted stepping through the portal when they heard the blazes. Red pulled out her bow and shot the pressure plate, opening the door. The blazes were rushing in, and there were a lot of them. This isn't how we left. There were only four or five, Ice Cream complained. We can hash that out later. Let's deal with this for now, Red answered. It was chaos everywhere. The fireballs went at all of them from multiple blazes. They were hitting each other, there were so many. Fortunately, that also gave the group the advantage. They jumped at all the blazes, striking down with their swords, and it only took one to two per hits per sword. They still had to avoid getting fireballed because of the explosions, which was a pain in the tail, but at least Toothless didn't have to dodge the remaining fire. Then, too many came at them. How many are there? Red asked. More than when we arrived, Ice Cream responded. They're spawning more frequently than they should. If we can get clear of these blazes, then maybe we could find out why, Red pointed out. I have an idea, Toothless shared, but you two will have to hold out against the blazes a little longer. Go for it, Ice Cream and Red yelled in unison. I said, bro speech. Toothless then took flight, sneaking behind the blazes. By now the blazes were pelting Red and Ice Cream with fireballs. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It was non-stop. Then Toothless carried out her plan. She flew, spiraling inwards towards the blazes, instantly killing them all. Toothless, that was amazing. How'd you know that would work? Ice Cream complimented. You taught me about critical hits, how it only works between falling and landing. So I wondered, what if I could do the same in flight? You know, fly a little, but descend some before touching the ground, Toothless exclaimed. Well, thank you, Red thanked. Meanwhile, the siblings were being controversial on how to find the end portal. We could just grab blaze rods off of those infuriating blazes. There are endermen in the nether. We could get easy materials off that, the brother implied. We could retrace the boy's steps. He fell right into our trap, the sister insisted. That would imply reaching the swamp. We need to make quick action, the brother exclaimed. Finally, the answer to their problems came. Near them was a cave, and near the mouth of that cave was, there was a trail of an enderman. The sister started to step forward, but the brother stopped her and reminded her, Stay here. I'm the one who can hypnotize a mob or player. Fine, but be swift about it, replied the sister. With that, the brother entered the cave. When he approached the enderman, he made it turn around, and he glared the enderman straight in the eye. It turned hostile instantly, but before it could swing a punch, the brother shot a fist near its face, and it froze. He looked for a straight minute. Then the enderman put down its arm. Show me and my sister the end, the brother commanded. The enderman immediately grabbed the brother, went outside and grabbed the sister, and teleported them both to the end. There, they were greeted by massive towers of, of obsidian. I am so bad at this. There, they were greeted by massive towers of obsidian and Jean. She started plummeting towards the two siblings, but as the brother stepped forward, he did the same thing to Jean, Ma, to Jean as he did to the Enderman. It took longer because Jean has a more complex mind than an Enderman, but she was now completely at the brother's mercy. 
Back in the nether, the group was having a struggle against the blazes. This is starting to annoy me, Ice Cream exclaimed. Me too, Red agreed. Hey, Toothless, almost got that spawner? Almost got it, Toothless shared. They all hit the remaining blazes critically for time's sake. Finally, they all said in unison, collapsing. Their celebration was ruined by two things in the next moment. First was Red pointing something out. Ice cream, she hinted. Your arm. It's fine. We're about to get out of here, Ice cream replied. Toothless, are you okay? You're being rather quiet. Toothless wanted to answer, but something kept her from speaking. Then she felt it. The tug. This was the tightest tug she's ever experienced. Then she started feeling her mind slip away, and finally, she fully collapsed. Toothless? Red asked, really concerned. Toothless! Ice Cream shouted. He started scanning her, from hair to wean to toe, and nothing was different, as he told Red. Red figured that something had to be different. She was right, in a way. When Toothless awoke, her eyes were glowing white, not purple and she pulled out her sword and swung at Ice Cream, who'd taken his armor off to cool. Then she said one word. Hero Brine. It was the creepiest thing ever, said in such a malignant, slow way. Ice Cream then drank the fire resistance as Toothless flew up, swung her sword right into Ice Cream's stomach and knocked him into the lava while he was knocked unconscious. Ice Cream, yelled Red. Toothless Hero Brine hadn't forgotten about Red, but instead of striking her, Toothless merely pounded Red's head into the brick, knocking her unconscious long enough for Toothless to escape. She went into the portal and disappeared like a shadow in darkness. Red woke up after about 13 seconds, then saw ice cream floating above the lava. She didn't want to go down there herself, so she pulled out her fishing rod and fished ice cream up, which actually worked. Ice Cream wasn't making any noise except for his short breaths. Ice Cream, wake up! Toothless, she's possessed, and you and I need to free her, Red begged. He still didn't wake up. She dragged him back into the overworld, where she put him on the same mat that he was on during his fire fever trouble. She went downstairs out and outside and yelled, Listen here, O'Brien, I don't know when or how, but I will get you for taking my new friend away from me. She knew, though, that both she and Ice Cream were in serious trouble. She didn't know when, she didn't know how, but she knew that Herobrine would try to kill her and Ice Cream. Sort of. They needed a plan. And next time, I'm going to do this earlier so that I'm not bothered. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this, then please leave a comment saying that you did along with other ideas for the channel because I am always open to suggestions. And then like, and then subscribe because that's the order you do it on this channel. And I will see y'all next time. See ya. Peace out.